Everywhere you look these days, something is telling the time. However, it wasn't always this way. Here at the British Museum, there are some amazing examples of how people used to measure the time. But our oldest time-telling devices are too big and far away to keep here. They're called the sun, the moon and the stars. You see, the stars, the moon and the sun all move in regular patterns across the sky. People thousands of years ago used these movements to chart the passing of time. For example, if you put a stick in the ground, the shadow it creates moves position as the sun crosses the sky. You can therefore work out the time from where the shadow falls. Sundials used this principle to tell the time. Some of the biggest and oldest can be found in Rome. Huge pillars that create gigantic shadows were used by the Romans as sundials. Over time, people developed portable sundials that you could hold in your hand, like these here. Let's give one a go. So the first thing we need to do is to set our sundial for our location. Right. If we just move the compass until yeah. it points towards mm -hmm. north. And then you should be able to read the shadow. Yep, yep. So that's four o'clock, five o'clock, oh. six o'clock, seven o'clock. It's resting on eight o'clock, so would that be eight in the morning? Exactly, yeah. Oh, very good. So I now know how to use a sundial. Very, very handy. Thank you very much, Louise. No problem. About 600 years ago, people started to tell the time in different ways without using the sun. Inventors started to make mechanical clocks like this one here. It measures movement power by weight to tell the time. These big clocks were often kept in towers or churches in town centres. A bit like Big Ben. They're very handy for telling people when it's time to go to work, to church or to parliament. This crazy clock uses the movement of a ball to measure time. Every time the ball gets to the end, 30 seconds has passed. It travels two and a half thousand miles a year. This is like walking from London all the way to Egypt. How do you set your watch? Do you look at the time on the news, the internet, or perhaps you just peer over and look at your friend's watch? Well, it's funny to think, only about 300 years ago, if your clock slowed down, or any of these clocks behind me, you'd still need a sundial to reset it. You see, the first mechanical clocks weren't very reliable, especially when you moved them around. So, for people that travelled for their work, there was a growing demand for a portable clock this clock here, a chronometer, would have gone all around the world and helped many great explorers navigate the seas. Unlike the other clocks we've already looked at, it was able to keep precise time on rough, stormy oceans, which was important if you were a sailor, because you needed to be able to tell the time to work out where you were and to prevent you from crashing into rocks. So clocks like this were a big deal as they helped both the navy and merchants and saved thousands of people's lives. As people's lives got busier, they travelled around more and industry developed, the need for more accurate time-telling devices got greater and greater. So clever inventors started to use science and electricity to come up with super accurate clocks, like this atomic clock, which uses complex physics to stay in time. This one is so accurate that it will lose no more than one second during the whole lifetime of the universe. Clocks like this have made it possible to send satellites into space and for us to use our mobile phones. This clock here may look rather simple to you, but it's actually rather sophisticated. Its time is set by radio waves sent from one of these atomic clocks. But there's something else fascinating about this clock and every other clock we use today that breaks time down into 60 minutes and 60 seconds. Why 60? Well, it comes from Babylonian mathematicians several thousand years ago that used to count with 60 units. Somehow, this ancient form of mathematics worked its way down into the time-telling devices we use today. So, every time you look at your clock or your watch, you're somehow connecting back 
to the ancient past. So the time now is exactly six minutes to eight. Ladies and gentlemen, the British Museum is now closed. Thank you for visiting. Goodbye. Oh, I better get going. Hang, hang on a minute. Hello? Excuse me? Hello? So I, I think I've been locked in. Is anybody there? Hello? Guess I'm sleeping here tonight.